So hi, <laughs> welcome to Good Noise Podcast. We're here with Have a Good Season. We're going to ask them some questions today. I'm going to start. Uh, what inspires you guys to start the band, and what does your band name mean? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> what, like, okay, well, I'll answer the second question first because it's, it's probably a little easier. Um, <laughs> the name is from a book titled Have a Good Season. Um, I never read the book, so I couldn't tell you what it's about, but uh, I think sometime in high school, I saw it like on a shelf in my English class, and I thought it was an interesting name. And I remember wanting to go back and get it, but it wasn't there. So, <laughs> so I, you tragic know, I, just the phrase, yeah, yeah. yeah. The tragic, phrase, yeah, tragic. <laughs> um, the phrase stuck in my head, but I never read the book. But yeah, that's where the name came from. Okay. Um, and what inspired us to start the band? Um, Saku, you wanna you wanna start us off? We uh, have a long we have a long history of like yeah. I mean, oh my god, stuff. it's crazy that uh because we've we've done other people have like interviewed us and we try to give like more condensed versions because it's just very long winded. But mm -hmm. the short version is we we're all from the same town. We've gone through the same schools, and we've all played music together in some variation. Uh, for example, most prominently, uh, Nick used to play bass. I used to actually be a lead guitarist in a band, and Statner was actually playing rhythm guitar. So we were all playing different instruments. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada, yada. Years passed by, and different iterations of bands happen. Um, I hop on drums because I've always been like into like more rhythm rhythmically inclined, I guess. And then Nick took the reins on uh, fronting guitar and frontman singing. Statner hopped on bass and it just clicked. I don't know how else to put it, but the chemistry was there. We started mm -hmm. writing music and we really liked what we were writing as opposed mm -hmm. to the other bands. Uh, we weren't fully in love with the stuff we were writing. I don't even think we were writing. We mm -hmm. were just like a cover band at that point who made okay. two or three originals. So mm -hmm. it's very, yeah, very amateurish and, you know, not, not so serious. And then, yeah, so this happened. We're a trio and uh, yeah. And we've all we all share the same common ground: love for '90s music and different types of music and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. it, it just works. I always I always like to mention that, like like Sakamoto said, like he was playing guitar and I was on bass and stuff. And then I remember my dad got like a little kit, like a like a children's drum kit, just like a for fun <laughs> kit in my basement. And I played it for like a little bit and like, but I never really got the got the hang of it. And I remember like randomly one time like he came over. And he was like, oh, like, let me jam on drums. And he was, like, sick on drums for yeah. some reason. <laughs> so, I, so, And then from that moment, I was like, wait a second. Yo, let's start a band right now. Like, oh, my God. Can, We're here you right know now. what I mean? It was, yeah. it was crazy. Like, just yeah. this this man has a natural, had a natural <laughs> talent for, for oh, drums. <laughs> um, it, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, to put it simply, it, it did kind of just happen like that. It just started from us jamming. It was actually me and mm -hmm. Nick just doing, like, front bottoms covers because, like, Back in the day when Front Bottoms was just acoustic guitar and a drummer, mm -hmm. uh, just Matt and Brian, uh, it kind of worked out that we could do a bunch of their arrangements easily, mm -hmm. like just drum and guitar. And yeah. yeah, from then on, yeah, it spurred into what Have a Good Season is today. Yeah. <laughs> they, the Front Bottoms were like the first band, like for us, like, because like they're from New Jersey, obviously. So when they were like first coming up, like we saw them at like a lot of like smaller venues and stuff. and. I can't say that I'm a fan now, obviously, like my music tastes have changed and stuff, yeah. but you know, they were definitely like the first like introduction for us to like DIY and like punk shows and stuff like that. So 100%. it was pretty cool to see them blow up. Yeah. But, yeah. But yeah. Understandable. Mm -hmm. Sick. All right. Uh, so how do you guys feel about the response you got to your newest album, Shapes I've Never Seen? Ooh. Um... Nick, why am I starting? <laughs> yeah, why don't you go first? Um, I, I've really, oh. I've, I've been. Oh, is someone here? Hey, I can't see him. Where is he? He's coming. He's loading. <laughs> that man. Um. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been really happy with how people have reacted to it. Um, I think, you know, it's been doing pretty well. Um, like just like streaming wise and stuff, but also just like people have been like hitting us up and giving their own interpretations of the lyrics and things like that, which I, I find really um, one of my favorite parts about putting putting music out. Oh, my God. Sorry, I just heard something really loud. Uh, yeah. is... <laughs> Good old stat. Uh, okay, let me finish my thought. I just okay. I, I enjoy when people 
um, respond to to the lyrics and the themes and stuff and give it their own interpretation. So I'd say I've I've been really happy with the response. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, I, I'd honestly say the same thing. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. They, they kind of like put it put it pretty well. Um, I really like when people um, are more on the musical side. Um, like are interested on how to play songs or, or they get like they're so interested like i'm grateful enough that people are interested in just to listen to it mm -hmm. but it's a no it's a whole other like appreciation when people are like oh like that section where the chords turn around and like they really start to analyze the songs and like that's really where like mm -hmm. oh, this is awesome like, people yeah. are interested enough to like analyze the chord structure or the lyricism or stuff like that and that's really people have been doing that for this album in particular so i'm really happy about that yeah, yeah uh, awesome. what's it like releasing an album in like the current state of the world with the covid and all that stuff going on um well it was it was tough because we had at first when when covid and the quarantining stuff started uh, we did have ideas and plans and stuff to do like a photo shoot and you know things like that to create more um, content for promoting mm -hmm. so I think we were kind of like handed this situation where we had to improvise a bit and you know we had to promote using what we had and we had to come up with clever ways to to promote the singles and the album and stuff like that so I think it was like a challenge but I mean I, I enjoyed the process like you know and I think it I think we learned a lot from it so yeah, yeah. It, I, would, I, I would say it wasn't easy, but I, it, it worked out for us. I think. I, I think we were actually, uh, in, a, in a way, kind of prepared because the way that we planned this, we did have a whole plan and you know, it didn't fully uh, come to fruition because of COVID. But the idea is, as you've seen, we, we did do four singles. We promoted each single differently, um, had lyric videos for the last the recent two singles and like we just had a lot of content and promo that we did before all this happened and we were lucky enough to kind of compile that and turn it into something more creative so that we could still post out content and keep promoting without you know going out or playing shows and because of all this stuff has happened so in that in that sense like i feel like our rollout plan somewhat worked in a way yeah. but at the end of the day you know everyone's all these artists and whatnot are we're all kind of in the same boat you know um, so we, uh, you know, just took the back seat for a little bit and let the music speak for itself. In other words, cause we were yeah. supposed to, we were supposed to, well, there was talks about potentially postponing the release of the album, mm -hmm. but actually the, when it came out is actually when it was supposed to come out. We did not delay it. We were just like, I think now is a time more than ever where people like are, like want more music or want yeah. music, whatever so we were like you know what i think i think this is a good idea um we should just stick with it and you know i i think it was a good move because i think i think the reception was as well as i would have thought so i think it was mm -hmm. good yeah we also had um a release show planned but obviously with social distancing we have to you know we have to put that off but i mean we've all learned about like live streaming and like you know doing that kind of like literally like internet concerts like yeah. the, the thought of that never even crossed my mind but yeah. because you know we were all kind of forced to do that like yeah. i don't know it was it was an interesting learning experience I think. for sure so so where was your headspace while you guys were writing shapes i've never seen hmm. um I think I think like the oldest song on it is like two or three years old, right? Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, the song "Glow Glow and Scab," uh, I think it's like the third or fourth song or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like a pretty old song. So, so our our, our yeah, it's hard to like pinpoint a, a specific headspace we're in. But um, yeah, I don't know if you guys want to add on to that. Or... Stat, do you know when that song was written? Like the time frame. <laughs> Summer of 2016, I believe. Uh, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Um, I will say, um, so Stats our resident. He knows all the dates for everything we've ever done. So he's very knowledgeable <laughs> about that stuff. Anyways, um, yeah. So that yeah, that's very true. Um, however, I will say, so like a handful of songs or like a few songs on the album are songs, yes, that date back to maybe 2016, but obviously mm -hmm. they've been reiterated and reworked on. 
uh, they're not how we used to play them. Like they've been slowly been uh, improved upon. And then obviously, I I usually characterize shapes I've never seen with like there was a there was like one really quick point where we kind of just started writing a bunch of tunes and they all came together really really quickly. So like newer tunes, for example, like uh, so shoulder blades, for example, is like a new tune that we did not date back to from 2016. Uh, you don't know comics, um, balloons. Even um, like the, there's a bunch of songs that are brand brand new, and I, I characterize the songs as coming together. Like I don't know, I think we were all just really really inspired at the time, and the chemistry just clicked, and we just mm -hmm. had a bunch of like seven brand new songs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then we yeah, and we I guess that kind of we felt the need to maybe we want we liked Glow and Scab, and we liked uh, songs that weren't as new, such as I believe Before the Gold Rush is kind of in the old new section or the new old section. Mm -hmm. um but we yeah so we looked back on it like you know what we could this could definitely be better and match up more up to speed to like these brand brand new songs mm -hmm. i felt like i feel like we did that you know mm -hmm. but yeah so what made like what inspired you guys to name the album uh shapes i've never seen was there like something that clicked for you guys that was like this is going to be the name um we we had a few different names in mind uh -huh. um and they were all they were all like specific uh lyrics or like references to a lyric in one of the songs on the album um and that that specific lyric shapes i've never seen is is from um true for you um and i don't know to me it just I, well first it just sounded really cool i think it that does, was like yeah. you know it, it had to like roll it had to it had to fit the the, the theme and the energy of, of the album yeah um but i the way i interpret it is like shapes i've never seen it's kind of like you can think of it as like a shape like a geometric shape and um you know like a cloud or something mm -hmm. um but it, it could also be like the shape of something like if you're in good shape or bad shape you know what i mean so it's like oh, oh it's a shape i've never seen it's like it's this new kind of it's this new feeling this new energy um and yeah huh? That wow, makes sense. a lot of meanings to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's um, sick. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I can't say anything more. Um, the one, the one thing I, I will say is though, like the the vibe of the album. Like we had a lot of contenders because I like me personally. I really like a lot of the. There are a lot of really hard hitting lyrics that Nick wrote um, that like were big contenders for the album title. Mm -hmm. But I think at the end of the day, they all looked cool on paper. Like they sounded cool, but like. At the end of the day, I feel like uh, Shapes I've Never Seen was something that was ambiguous enough that could cover the whole spectrum of the album, but also have kind of like a vibe to it. Whereas some of the other album contender uh, titles were a bit too specific on like the uh, like super sad side or the super angry side, or the, you know what I mean? And, and, and we, I didn't feel like it totally encapsulated all 12 songs on the album. Whereas I feel like a title like Shapes I've Never Seen, where you can kind of take so many multiple meanings to it, can definitely apply to all 12 songs. So mm -hmm. I thought it was a very fitting thing. I think that's Yeah. All. Wow. That's perfect. Oh my God. Okay. Thank so you. <laughs> what band's influences do you think you can hear on the album? Ooh, that's um, a good one. Yeah. Uh, Stat, you want to you wanna chime in? Yeah. I can't really hear you. I don't uh, know if anyone else can. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're big fans of Modest Mouse, uh, Donatra Jr those types of bands so definitely i feel like this this album definitely reflects like those influences through all of us uh saku has an eclectic uh taste in music oh you go, yeah you you can talk to him about that sure <laughs> um so so what stat said it covers kind of all our common ground basically and there's obviously a, sl a slew of other bands that we're fans of such as uh, I'd, I'd throw Oso Oso and Basement, uh, Tiger mm -hmm. Scout, like those types of bands. Title fight, like, title fight for sure. Title fight for sure. Um, but yeah, like I was alluding to, I, I'm a big metalhead. I listen to a lot more like progressive metal type stuff. Taste. Um, yeah, hey. uh, and just to name a few for the fans out there, but like, you know, like Chon for Free Animals as Leaders, Contortionist, just to name a few. But mm -hmm. obviously, I would not say that those. I wouldn't say that those bands are reflected on the album per se. However, how I like kind of approach some songwriting or just like maybe like just the smallest tinge of of, of influence 
Yeah, like I like a lot of like jazzy type chords and cool chords. You can see that in some of these songs. Um, and you know, I, 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 I'm also a big avid like you know math rock, emo, like post rock <laughs> band. And so a bunch of those. Uh, I think we're all fans of Toe, the Japanese um, math uh, post rock band. Um, post rock, whatever, Japanese band. Uh, they're super <laughs> sick for Japan. Um, yeah, and we're all fans. And yeah, I can maybe. Like that that outro section and um, you don't know how heavy it felt. I'd even say that could be maybe from a toe song slightly. Um, mm -hmm. And then yeah, I mean that's that's just like my kind of like my flavors. But Nick, if you want to go into your your stuff too, um, yeah, I, th I think that we each have common ground for a few bands that we all really like. But like you know, like Dan said. Um, He's, he's big on metal and like I, personally I can like hear it in his playing you know like just the way you you attack the drums like like you hit really hard and just like the little intricacies and stuff yeah I think I think are reflective of that and you know the same goes with stat like I know the kind of music he listens to a lot of ni 90s you know grungier alternative kind of stuff and I hear it in his playing and yeah I think each of our individual influences kind of create the sound that that um, that's on the record. So, so what song like on the album took you guys the longest to write? Ooh. <laughs> uh, I think we each shoulder blades. Shoulder blades? shoulder blades. Um, shoulder blades. Like I, I'll go out out on a limb and say like none of the songs really. I didn't, a lot of this, there was no one song that we felt took the longest. Like we were having a really, really hard time on this one song. Mm -hmm. and we just couldn't get it right. I, I wouldn't say that there was any one song on the album that was like that. Mm -hmm. So they all were, I guess, very similar in how long it took to come to fruition. Yeah. I'm not going to include the songs that, um, for example, like we, we mentioned Glow and Scab, which we had a iteration of at, from 2016 and yeah. we, like, upgraded. I won't because we weren't actively trying to write that for four years. <laughs> like, it was just, yeah, like, it wasn't a continuous like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I won't really. I'll exclude that. But um, yeah, Shoulder Blades was kind of one because we were touring with the idea of a potential uh, guest vocalist, which we ended Ooh. up doing. Um, also, we were touring out with the idea of having uh, like a gang vocal section, which we ended up doing. Um, and uh, yeah, just like vocal melodies, like we wanted to try some some things new. Uh, mm -hmm. I I think. I don't know technically, but like I think Nick's probably singing probably a lot of the more higher notes of the whole album just on that one song. Um, so I think vocally it's very, very um, uh, like a good good showcasing of, of Nick's vocal work. Um, and yeah, and that probably could be why we spent more time on it and why it took mm -hmm. the longest. Um, what's there's one other song that I think I I would say. Well, I would add on to Shoulder Blades and say. Um, that that song, like all the chords and the guitars and stuff, were written and played by Sakamoto. Oh, so, in hello. in terms of like, like, like when we went into the studio to record it, I didn't even know all the chords on guitar because I was just like, "Listen, man, like this is your tune." Like, right. and he knew like you were gonna take the take take the guitar duty. So I didn't learn the song till like not that long ago, to be honest. Oh wow! So I get I guess technically like that may. In, in a way be the longest one it took to learn yeah but, just, but that's just like for me personally because like right. i didn't know all the chords going into the studio because i knew that he would be playing well which is crazy because i actually might even argue that that was the shortest song to make because i wrote that <laughs> song i i so for example so in the same vein that so the song balloons which is like i believe the eighth track on the album um, um, is totally written by Statner, our bassist. Um, the same vein that I kind of wrote everything for Shoulder Blades, minus all the, the vocal melodies and all that stuff. But I didn't take that long to write that song. I think I came up with that song in probably a day, like one day. Oh, wow. So so the idea is I came with this full flesh song and, you know, we all, you know, I'm always open for interpretation, open for uh, changing and all that stuff. But I don't know, the arrangement that we already had was was fine and everyone was jiving with it and at that point what do we do we just got to add the, the vocal parts and, and the textures and the extra stuff and i didn't even think that took too long too whereas a song like i think a song like you don't know how heavy it felt where 
Nick came up with a majority of those guitar parts. I had a hand in structuring the song a little bit, and maybe I think I wrote one of the parts in it. Um, uh, kind of just acting as like a guitar, uh, what you call it, like mediator in a way. Like, oh, maybe yeah, this yeah. one little nuance should be changed or whatever. Just like really, really slowly and steadily tweaking some guitar parts. That's a song where all three of us were heavily involved in, like pretty, pretty three-way split. And I think that's also the reason why it could have taken a lot longer. Whereas other songs were like, for example, uh, so Nick wrote all Sunflower Yellow um, and it was, the arrangement was perfect. The lyrics were perfect, but everything was done. And I just added the lead guitar parts over it. And that was a pretty quick like thing. Yeah. Um, so I thought that's, uh, yeah, that was really cool. So that's really yeah. interesting. Cause we haven't, I actually really haven't thought about that aspect of the album yeah so mm -hmm. i appreciate the question mm -hmm. uh, I, i'll add one more thing sorry for go going for too it. long oh, go for go it. it um i i found that the song balloons was really fun to write because mm -hmm. um because statner obviously wrote like a lot of uh, he wrote all the guitar and bass and stuff but it still needed lyrics and like for some reason like the the melodies weren't like hitting us like we couldn't think of like good lyrics or good melodies so some of the lyrics oh. were actually written in the studio which was a wow. total first for us like minute. yeah yeah it was pretty last minute some of that song yeah, <laughs> like, usually, yeah so even the guitar solo too like all the lead guitars were like oh yeah studios or like the day before we went into the studio it was like yeah. all yeah <laughs> yeah our usual approach is to have everything finished and then we go in and then you know so so we're we're ready for it but um that song we we had to write like on the spot so that was kind of fun. It was like a pressure, but like it was like you know, it was it was a it was a it good was experience. Like creatively challenging, you know. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I feel like I feel like if we didn't do that, the song, the end product of that song would might not have been as good, you know. Like if we already had written it and we're like, okay, fine, we're we're not gonna improve upon it anymore. Like mm -hmm. this is it. Yeah. Whereas when we spur of the moment, we just come up with what we can do on the spot or really really time crunch. We come up with something that's super cool and that's prime example of that for me is statner's lead guitars in that song where it kind of came up either the day before or like literally in the studio and yeah. came up with something super sick we're like we're like i hope adam saved that because we're we're keeping that take because that take is <laughs> thick yeah um, so yeah i just feel like that is really 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 cool really cool wait one thing shane before you go would you guys do that again like go into the studio and write on the spot would you ever try that again Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, I like, yes, but not per. I don't think on purpose. Like okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I think yeah. like we're a... not gonna like we're not gonna like put off writing a lyric. And be like, <laughs> oh wait, it'll hit yeah. us. It'll hit us in the studio tomorrow. <laughs> like yeah. that's just that's not a that's yeah. not how, yeah. how we would do it. But yeah, I think if sense. it if it came down to it, I would I think that would be fun to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay. Um. So I know you guys like have an intro track. So how did you pick a closer for the album? Did did you write it to be a closer, or did it just fall that way? Well, Nick, you uh, wrote comics. Are you had yeah. Comics, so. I I think that just it kind of had like a more upbeat um, kind of energy to it. So I think we kind of all agreed that that would be the closer. So it didn't end on like a you know like a sadder note like i kind of wanted we all wanted the album to end on more um i don't know, to say it's happy like the lyrics are kind of sad so i wouldn't call the song happy but yeah it's a little more it's a little yeah. more upbeat. Upbeat. yeah yeah so i think um, i think we all felt like it was a good good closing um yeah I, I i think we definitely knew that like so intro we had actually was one of the we had intro or at least the idea of intro that became the the song intro like a while ago uh, we'd actually use it as an intro to our song um, um, when we play live, just because it works out key wise and uh, both on Capo One. Um, anyways, but like, yeah, we really liked it, and we, we, we it was like a strong contender for the intro of the album. But that begged the question, like, what would be the outro of the album? And we de we weren't we definitely weren't on the vibe of calling. We didn't really like having an intro as the first song, and then the talk track going to be called outro. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't want to go that whole cliche route. Um, but definitely an outro-ish song that could close out the album. And yeah, I love comics in the in the sense that like it's happy sad because like the the beat it's upbeat and it's like 
you know, jovial and whatnot, but you look at the lyrics and there's that middle section of the song, which has kind of more of a somber, uh, like, yeah, definitely more on the sadder side. Um, so it's a mixture of both. And, and I, yeah, I think it's a good representation or a good closure for the album. Not necessarily like a, like a win-win, like overall happy, completely happy ending, mm-hmm. but you know, not a completely sad ending. Yeah. What what's the song right before it again? Is it Softness and Love before that or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah is, I think I think that's also important to yeah. to note or interesting, I guess, because like that song is like definitely sad, and that song is definitely like really low key, and it's almost like a it's like a it's like prepping you for the you know the out the 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 last song, which is just yeah. like a burst of energy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. it's like real quiet, real sad, and then it's like nope. We got kicked one in the more. face. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, kick right to the face. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, if you could choose one song from your new album to present to like new people as a representation of your band, which song would you pick? Mm-hmm. Stat, stat, you go first. Let's yeah. see what you, you have to say. You're all so good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Probably Sunflower. The first uh, single off the record. I guess most people know it. Associated with this record. So, yeah. I don't know. What about you guys? I, I think I would say Sunflower, too, actually. It's just like, I feel like it's like... Um, it's a good example of, of our sound. And I yeah. think... Um, like, it's not it's not super intricate it's not simple it's kind of a good in between and yeah like stat said it, it was the first single and i it's one of my personal favorites so i would i would go with that one agree, it's, got a, agree. it's got a nice bright sunny kind of a vibe to it so. i um i mean i so i was trying to not pick the same song <laughs> but to be honest so how i usually think about that is it's 12 songs is a lot, and it's definitely a, a much more like cohesive group of songs than we've ever done. We've never do, done a full length. We've only done like five or four song EPs, and then we only have the one single uh, gum standalone song. But so we have a lot of these new songs that are kind of, in a way, like taking us to the next level because, like, we're you know we're always growing. We're always trying to like level up our songwriting skills and not just stick to the hacks formula that like perhaps like Last Picture Day or literally first work ever. Um, people will oftentimes uh, say that it's more on the pop punkier side. And, you know, we do like pop punk, but like, we wouldn't consider ourselves like super heavily influenced by pop punk bands. Yeah. But in that regard, I agree that like Sunflower, and I would even put Chu for you in that, in that realm, because Chu for you has got that like kind of like heavier, grittier guitars. And that kind of is an homage to like the stuff that's off Last Picture Day, or maybe the stuff that's off our Joseph EP. Um, but so in a way yes those songs are very representative of like the hag sound in a way <laughs> but i will say that songs like shoulder blades and like you don't know how heavy you felt and like kind of the second half of the album are definitely representative of like what direction we might be heading towards or okay. kind of like what not direction we're going to stick to but definitely what directions we might be playing around in this okay um because you know a song like shoulder blades which is like kind of like a lovey dovey song and uh, it's got some interesting chord progressions and whatnot that might not have been seen in previous books, like uh, Gum or, or, or whatever, all our previous books. It's definitely indicative of perhaps the next level we could take it to. Um, um, but that's not to say that any less of Sunflower Yo. Like, Sunflower Yo is probably one of my it's top two songs, top three songs off the record for me, personally. Yeah. Um, and it has, like, a... I don't know, like... If you re- like, uh, and Nick, instead, you you can tell me if I'm, I'm, I'm wrong or whatever. But it has that like, it's kind of like an old school vibe if you think about it. Like I I, I hear a lot of like 70s and 60s like influence, uh, oh. especially in like the, the melodies, it, it just like the song structure in general, um, the very poppy catchy hooks of the of the of the, like the 70s and, and 80s, um, like rock just classic rock bands. Yeah. Kind of, I kind of get that in like uh, songs like Sunflower Yellow. Um, so in that vein, I think that's why those two songs might be uh, 
the best representation for um, mm. what Hags is or mm. what we stand for and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback off that and say that we all did like growing up as kids like lo love like classic rock and you know rock and roll and stuff and I still you know some of my favorite bands ever are from that era you know the 70s and 60s and stuff so yeah I think I think Sakura has a point there like those are like our earliest influences like peeking through on that song so I think that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. so okay so are you planning or were you planning and it might have gotten like stopped for now but were you planning on releasing any music videos for this album and I know that you guys have a couple of like lyric videos already but what about normal videos mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, uh, we we have some ideas floating, and um, uh, you know, obviously, we're not we're not gonna do it any any time like this week or anything. Like, you know, we need yeah. to yeah. kind of sit back for a little bit and observe what's happening. And um, but yes, we do have some ideas floating in our heads for the videos and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes. They, they, they <laughs> is, I don't. We don't want to dispel too much, but you know, obviously, music videos take a bunch of time to. We, we, we have one music, like official music video for our song Gum, which was at the, it's pretty old at this point. Um, and yeah, the approach is very, um, it is what it is. Um, uh, like, uh, it, as you can see, it's very uh, like a grainy type footage. Like that's the approach we took for it. And we thought the song was very fitting in that very summery, breezy kind of song. Yeah. Um, so that's why we did that. And um, I really like that video. Um, but yes, we do have some... We do have plans for uh, music videos in the future. Uh, they're going to be a different approach. And, yeah, it would. They're going to be off songs or more recent work. Um, but yeah, when the time is right and more appropriate, and we can safely execute said shooting and filming and all that stuff, like it's coming. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, all right. Awesome. Look cool. forward to it. Um, so yeah. speaking of when the time is right, oh, when live shows come back. What would be your what are top your top three songs that you're most excited to play off the new album? You don't know. <laughs> Definitely you don't know. Oh yeah. That one's gonna be a fun one. Yeah. We only played that once live, like last year. Sometime last year. Yes, and it was before we really even finished it kind of. Yeah. Uh we were just test running it, I guess. It would be really cool to show everybody like the finished finished product you know right yeah right. yeah um that's tough because so i will say that you know we songs like sunflower yellow and true for you amongst a few others um we've been playing live um even before like people already knew like what singles those would be and whatnot um me personally you don't you don't know how heavy it felt would be a fun one i would i really want to do I can't wait to do comics live. I think that'd be really cool live. Yeah. Um, and shoulder shoulder blades live too. Mm -hmm. Um, just because it just I don't know. I, the, the just all the all the cool kind of unprecedented the parts we've never even like tried before. So we were, we're gonna try and experiment live would be really awesome. But those would be my top yeah. three as far as when coming back live. Um, like the new like real new stuff that we have. Those all those ex minus excluding what Stat said about you don't know how heavy it felt. Shoulder blades and comics we never played live, so yeah, I'll 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 go with the same three honestly. I think those are I'm most excited for those, and mm -hmm. and I'm, I am excited to play some of the older tunes too, just to see oh, yeah. how people react and stuff. But yeah, I would say in terms of new songs, I'll go shoulder blades. You don't know and comics. Yeah, yeah. solid for sure. Um, so, um, so for the last couple questions, uh, we're going to uh, switch away from music and we're going to go straight to death row. Uh, so if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Ooh, bro. Saku's a foodie. Ooh. No, bro. no, 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 no. He is, no. yo. He is. This man no. loves food. Bro, I make food. Let's go. No, no. I'm a fake foodie. Don't, I don't want to take the mantle of being foodie. Because then people will be like, oh, like, oh, you make your own gluten-free pasta one night? I'm like, I don't, know shit. I don't know anything about food. Oh um, I'm a foodie in the sense that I, like, I, I really like food. Um, I like iconic spots. 
I like like iconic food spots that are in the media and whatnot that are like really mm-hmm. great for like southern barbecue or like really specific for a certain type of food. And I'm like, I really want to try that and like just really taste the greatness of food. Like I'm not a food yeah. anything about like food. Um, Death Row. Uh, you said beverage. Were you saying beverage? Uh, a drink and oh, food. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I'm also a big Bev guy. I love. Oh that. my god. Oh, all right. Ooh. I don't make drinks, but <laughs> <laughs> let's talk. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> um, food. I I'm a big pasta guy. Any kind of pasta, like just really, not even pasta. Just like uh, I just love any type of like noodles, yeah. noodle dishes. Um, anything from like Japanese soba noodles to like um, uh, just Italian cuisine. Mm-hmm. Um, big meat, <laughs> meat head, <laughs> meat guy. Uh, I like meat head. like. <laughs> steaks, steaks and whatnot. Um, yeah, I, I I don't have like a really specific meal, um, but what about what about like a Korean barbecue? I feel like that would be like uh, one of see, your I'd top See, I'd like meals. I'd like all those to be my last uh, my last meal. <laughs> but honestly, uh, as of right now, because um, my fam and I have been uh, we've been cooking um, in our house uh, like Korean barbecue, uh, sungyeopsal type stuff, like Korean bacon meat and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Anyways. I will say that as my last meal, I would love to have uh, just a, a table spread of Korean barbecue. Everything that it com- encompasses Korean barbecue. Sorry. Drink. Ah, I mean, uh, that's tough. I don't know. I have like a, la- I have a lame answer probably. Bro. But, uh, I like um, Bro. <laughs> just like a nice cold carbonated drink. <gasps> oh, my good- God. Yeah, like, sorry. I, I don't want to just say soda pop, but like I mean, like, like um, it has to be from a it has to be from like a a can or or a glass bottle or something. Like where like the carbonation is really high quality. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it has to have the right amount of ice cubes. I don't care okay. what kind of soda it is. If it has carbonation, the right amount of ice cubes is cold hard beverage. Yeah. I'm in. Mm-hmm. So. I feel I feel like you can't be like a Coke on like a yeah. hot day. Yeah. Why not a ramen? Yeah. <laughs> or, <laughs> see, I want. I was going to say ramen, but like, I don't think I would want like that sugary ramen drink as my last beverage for mm-hmm. um, if I was on death row. I think I'd want something like, honestly like a like a seltzer, maybe like a hard seltzer. seltzer. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, all right. All Wait, right, so, so do you like um sparkling water? I, I'm a big sparkling. Oh, I lo- I'm a huge oh, seltzer. Oh, Nick. oh my god! <laughs> Thank you. Nick, okay. You need a yeah. I'm a. I'm I'm a to <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll go seltzer as my <laughs> my death row beverage, and for for meal, um, I don't know. Maybe like a maybe like a Japanese katsu, like a fried Ooh. pork or something with a nice bowl of white rice. Either that or like a burger. <laughs> burger. Two completely different things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, and a and a and a, a cup of seltzer. Okay, what you got? <laughs> Me, I'm part of the small percentage of people on this earth that really loves a good stroganoff dish. Mm. And uh, I would say like a pound of stroganoff in like okay. a nice big bowl and a water, a refreshing water. Yeah. So like it settles nicely, you know. I'm not yeah, yeah, like exactly. suffering like on my last month of an earth so yeah you don't want to be um, bloated you pretty full like, yeah exactly i've never had That's my answer. i've never had stroganoff let alone a pound of no, you had, uh, <laughs> what is it made of there's like mushrooms in it's, it, isn't it? i mean i don't like mushrooms but like it's egg noodle with like beef but like really good sauce yeah is that the red sauce thing Oh, it's not red sauce, but... Oh, okay. I've never brown had... Brown sauce? Or like... I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, kind of. Okay. It's like a cream sauce. Anyways. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's your drink? I said water. Oh, water. water. <laughs> can't nice beat and a, simple. You can't beat a water. Yeah, it can't beat exactly. just water, honestly. All natural. All natural. Exactly. exactly. Natural. Right. <laughs> There it is, the hags trifecta of death row meals. <laughs> All good meals. All good meals. Thank you. So, okay. So, away from all the food talk, 
Um, <laughs> if you could uh, live in a fictional world for a week, where would you live? Uh, a fictional Whoa. world? Yeah, fictional. Mm -hmm. Like a Narnia or something? Yeah, sure. Something like that. If you want to live in Narnia, um, that would be cool. Hmm. That would be cool. It might be the only fictional world I can think of. Right now. <laughs> what about like? Um, what about or whatever? What about like Springfield and the Simpsons? Oh, that's a good <laughs> one. Just barrels of laughs every day. So many funnies. <laughs> barrels of laughs and beer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fictional world. That's that's a cool question. Um. Uh, so I, I sometimes imagine that it would be really cool to like go back in time and like like if I had a chance to like either see the future or the past, I think maybe I would like go to the past and like like I think like there's nothing cooler than the idea of like seeing a dinosaur in real life. So yeah. oh, I think crazy. maybe my fictional world would be similar to 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 life on Earth now, but with like friendly dinosaurs. So like I mean, Jurassic Park, I mean, like Jurassic World or something. Yeah, like a not like a not so scary Jurassic World. Like so, like more, right like... before everything like goes down. Yes, <laughs> before yeah. the okay. world sets that yeah. would be pretty cool. Jurassic yeah. Park. Um, that's that's mine. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, let's see, let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of like, uh, like a world where um, animals. And humans are very much more one of the same in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I don't want to go out on. And I know there's like I see people write like fictional stories about if animals and humans like swapped completely, mm -hmm. whereas like you know animals are the human beings and you know the human beings are on leashes and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh not not that per se, but more so like what if they were literally just our equals, mm -hmm. and they could just do everything that we could and talk and, and they could speak yeah 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 you know what i mean like just act as normal humans yeah uh, but for i guess they <laughs> i guess they just like you know they still look like i don't know there had to be some sort of limitations and restrictions because it would this sounds like i'm just explaining like cats like the movie cats. <laughs> yeah i was, I was <laughs> thinking movie. cats yeah where they, you know what i mean and i don't want that that's not what i want okay um, good to know. Some, but something more where like you know, maybe maybe just a next a few levels up from reality right now. Okay. Um, um, where they could just be your, be more than just like your 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 buddy, but they could like watch a football game with you and like, you know, have a conversation about football with you. <laughs> yeah. Like that. You know what I mean? Like, but that's yeah. it. Nothing more than not not to, not towards the the cats musical. Uh, yeah. What's what's coming to mind for me is uh, like Charlie Brown because like he has Snoopy. Right, oh, yeah. Snoopy's oh, like, yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. what came to mind. So, oh, so yeah. I'll just live in uh, the Charlie Brown world. That's fine. Cool. There that's you go. Fine. Sick. <laughs> You'd love to see it. Are you guys yeah. fictional world? I don't. I don't know. This is too heavy a question. <laughs> <laughs> both of you guys, like, you have very ideal worlds, and I would love to live in both of those types of worlds together. I don't. I don't think anything could be more peaceful than like. What you just described. <laughs> that was an animal? Oh, so I, that was a cat lover, so that was Yeah. Cool. I have no original content, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay. That's such an L. But we completely understand. Yes. Um so I have the honor of asking the last question. Most people say it's the most important question. What is your favorite Ooh. color? Oh, color. 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 Uh, my favorite color is green. Because it's it represents life, I believe. Yeah. Trees and the, the air. I don't know. Everything around you is green. I mean, not including money, but including money. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I get it. I get it. <laughs> that green That's what, uh, I I like very, I like green. I like green too. I think it has like a wide like like. There's like a lot of variations of green that I think look nice. Yeah, yeah. And specific. I think it, I think it pairs. Yeah, like I like like a forest green, but I also like like an emerald. Mm, uh, yeah. Not a big fan of neon green. Oh. But, yeah, but you know, if anyone is, I'm not. I'm not gonna diss them. That's that's okay. all bully um, glory. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, are you a neon green fan? I'm not a neon green fan, but I do like the color. I'm a yellow yeah, person. Nick, I might. Okay. I mean, depending on my answer, I might fall into that category too. Oh. Oh, L. You see, it's. I'm not judging. I'm just saying, personally, I, I like 
I like more like a darker or like a. Yeah, olive. I don't know. Yeah, like green. olive is a nice green. Just yeah, like, I, think, yeah. I think green like also pairs nice with other colors. Like it I, really I like does. A, like a green and pink or a green and orange. I I don't know. I think it looks nice. Mm -hmm. Um. So I that that's a good point because I like. I like uh, so a lot of the like the main colors, but my favorite colors are usually different shades or different variations of like a green, such as like a more like an olive type type green or like a more turquoisey type green or a teal or whatever, like a not like a your classic green or neon green. However, I will say a lot of my favorite things that I look at or um, in particular food, and like people make fun of me about this all the time. Um, but like a lot of my favorite foods just happen to be green. There has to be some sort of correlation behind it. Mm -hmm. um, for example, like mint chocolate chip ice cream is my favorite, mm. uh, along with pistachio ice cream. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, I'm not gonna say that like the green color makes it taste better. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but that's what you're saying. It it yeah, it might make it taste better for me. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in that regard, the green, yeah, overall green. That's why green is kind of my favorite color. But all all stats and Nick's points are valid. Like, yeah, it's it's a very cool color and meshes well nicely with other colors. I will say that blue is a very uh, hard second for me. Second favorite color. There's green on the album cover. I just realized. Yeah, it's like, like oh green, green, green and orange. Yeah. Wow. I dig, I dig a lot. Um, what's everyone what's everyone's favorite ice cream <laughs> oh, um God. okay um there's this i don't know what it's called but it has like little like chocolate truffles in it and it's like mm. chocolate with moose little tracks. Oh. is that uh, moose tracks no 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 <laughs> no it's just like just chocolate ice cream with little truffles in it That's that sounds cool. sick it's that very good bad. yeah sounds fancy um, I already said mine. <laughs> green. I, I, sta I stand by those. Not green lie. ice cream. Green, yeah, yeah any green, green ice cream. Green. <laughs> green. Uh, mint chocolate. Oh, Stat likes mint chocolate. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Any anything cherry? I don't know. Something about that oh, just hits different. Mm. Cherry. Oh, yeah, glory. Cherry. <laughs> like cherry Garcia by Ben and Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good I'm one. I'm down with that. Yeah. I like that. That's different. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, has anyone has anyone ever had Smurf? Smurf? <laughs> no. Yeah, I I yeah. only know where to get it at this one specific ice cream place by us, but mm -hmm. it's like it literally tastes like Fruit Loops and it has marshmallows in it. Ooh. Ooh. Is it blue? It is blue. It's like a oh light blue. Yeah. Like I I want to try that now. <laughs> it's really good. I might scoops, have to scoops in Ocean Township. Okay, I will. When I you come, when it. you come to New Jersey. Oh wait, yeah, I was gonna ask, like, where are you guys, where are you guys uh, based out of? I am in New Jersey. I'm okay. in Virginia. Oh, cool. oh. oh, okay. Where in Virginia? Um, I'm near Virginia Beach. Oh, okay. Oh wow, yeah. my friend was just there. Oh wow, I didn't know that. And uh, what about uh, Ryan? Ryan is in Georgia. Ryan. Yeah. Georgia. So we're all over the map here. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Post gang. Yeah. Let's go. We play one of our, or at least one of my personal favorite shows on tour in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. Where? Uh, it was a house show near Georgia Tech. Oh, that's that's cool. It was yeah. it was so fun. It was, so, it was like a lot of people. It was mad people there, and it was like an outdoor, like it was almost like a block party type. Yeah. Vibe. The friendliest crowd ever. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was sick. Yeah, that's cool. Y'all tipped us mad money. <laughs> that's always good. Money. A lot of that's green and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, shout out to Orlando, Georgia. We definitely want to come back there eventually. Hell yeah. Um, it's like, wow, you guys are all over. That's crazy. That's awesome. All over the map. All Wait, where in map. Jersey are you from? I Shane. am on the Jersey Shore, like five minutes from Jenks. Hey. Okay. Oh, really? So you're, yeah, you're, we are shore, shore folks. Hell yeah. yeah. So, awesome. um,. As I said, that is all the questions I uh, we have for you today. Is there anything you would like to plug? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, I don't know, Nick. What, what do you What do you think? Uh, I guess um, I'd like to thank everyone for checking out the album and for any kind words that they've thrown our way. 
And if anyone is, you know, out um, going to protest or, you know, doing something to help others, uh, I hope you're safe doing it and wearing a mask and, and all that stuff. So that's what I, that's all I got. Yeah. I, we really don't have, like, we really appreciate the whole album and, um, you know, people that checked it out. But, you know, at this um, current state and whatnot, uh, we don't really have anything to plug other than um, listening to, to the current situation, all that stuff. Like, we're yeah. doing the same thing. So I think that's very important. So we're kind of taking a step back and whatnot. Um, but obviously, when things are better and, and, and you all are you know, hungry for new music and all that stuff, and when, when live shows start happening and touring, all that stuff comes back, you already know that we're, we're going to be back. Hell yeah. But for right now, yeah, I would definitely encourage all our fellow fans to uh, please stay safe and, and uh, aware of everything and do their best to help out where they can. So that's all we got. We're not trying to plug anything else. I, that, yeah, I completely understand. Uh, so yeah, congrats on the album, guys. Uh, and thank you for sitting down with us. This has been Have a Good Season and We're the Good Noise Podcast.